Hi, I'm Maya Jenkins and I'm an editor at CGT. Welcome to this 360 degree view fireside chat where we talk with industry experts about some of the most important trending topics today. In this episode, we're going to be tackling AI in marketing. So AI is not a new phenomenon, but recently it's really taken hold of the spotlight and is holding our attention for good reason. However, many of us will be left wondering how to cut through the noise and get ahead of some of these tools that are out there on the market now. And that's what we're going to be looking at today. Our guest on this episode is Miro Dimitrov, who is the president of a data analytics company called NWO.ai. Miro, welcome. It's great to have you here with us. Could you please introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your company? At NWO.ai, we're an AI-enabled consumer intelligence company. Um, So in plain words, what this means is uh, we built a predictive platform that is tracking close to 100 million unique consumer signals across virtually any external data source. To give you an example, this could be from news or social media, scientific, financial, e-com. So a variety of different data sources across the globe to essentially understand what is the consumer interest in, in virtually any topic. Great. Thank you. It's wonderful to have you here with us today. Could you speak a little bit about the market at the moment and why is using advanced AI and analytics to leverage consumer insights and make decisions so important right now? And what unique advantages does AI bring to the table when it comes to extracting meaningful insights from these vast amounts of consumer data that we do have at our hands today? Certainly. Um, I think understanding the the needs and preferences of of your customers or or consumers is really the most important job of any business, right? Regardless of whether you're in retail, consumer, or or software. Um, I think the difference now compared to a few years ago is, first of all, the growing amount of data that is being created every single day on the internet, right? Um, And then the second thing, of course, is the the, uh, technological advancements. You mentioned uh, advanced AI. I think we live in the most uh, interesting era ever when it comes to technology. And what this really allows us to do is, you know, instead of, as you mentioned, uh, just looking at one particular data source or looking at a static study, you can actually right now apply advanced AI algorithms to to really come through this, to sift through the noise uh, and start direct, you know, start talking to uh, basically your, your, your data set, start asking questions such as, well, if I'm a beauty company, for example, what are the, the top trending ingredients right now and what is the consumer interest in a particular uh, area? More importantly, um, I think what people uh, are really interested in and what people are really interested in understanding is what is driving that. So, you know, to be very practical, if you think if you're, let's say, a business executive and you're thinking in, in three, well, you're always thinking in three different time horizons, right? So let's say horizon one is something which is more day to day. So, hey. I'm interested in improving the performance of my marketing campaign, for example. In the end, you're marketing to, to, to people, right? So we need to be able to relate to them. That's not new. Uh, I think the new thing is, you know, that now using, again, uh, all the different, basically intelligence from all these different data sources, they're actually able to time these campaigns much better, right? Uh, without sounding, of course, uh, artificial or violating any privacy, you can understand, well, you know, do people care about this topic more than, 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 than another one, right? And what can my brand do to actually help them achieve their outcomes, right? Um, and again, this is really a uh, day-to-day, right? Then we can go into Horizon 2, which is then uh, becomes more, 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 more tactical. You want to, you know, launch uh, your operations in a new uh, country or region, or you want to go in an adjacent market and launch a new product. And we're seeing this all the time, especially in, in, in consumer industries. And then the question here is, what kind of data do you actually need to make your, your uh, you know, to make a sound decision? And I think before, and even, you know, up to a, a few months ago, it was just, it was just a tedious process, right? First of all, you never have enough information, but then secondly, the, the information that you get is always, almost always outdated. Right. Uh, so you're looking at a study report that was, for example, the survey for which was conducted probably six months before it was published. So you're basing as an executive your 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 decision on on, on something that is outdated and instead of actually using advanced technologies and models to 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 shape and understand what the future might may may hold for you. Right. And actually basing your decision on forward looking insights. So I think these are like let's say two very very concrete examples where 
it's it's really not theory. It's actually being it's it's happening right now. So there are plenty of of companies that are already using technologies like that to uh, basically build competitive advantage. Thank you. It's almost impossible these days to talk tech without also talking about artificial intelligence. And AI is undoubtedly top of mind among our audience, particularly technologies like generative or conversational AI. What are your thoughts on these tools that are gaining buzz, these buzzworthy tools? And how can retailers and CPGs cut through the noise and start using them more effectively to see actual results and gain real benefits? I think um, everybody has a different uh, starting point, right? So, you know, if we think about what's going on right now, of course, it's it's a fundamental shift, right? And and again, if you know, it's it's much more than a buzzword, right? Because again, there are companies who are already adopting these technologies. There are quite a number of studies that are showing uh, very, very promising results. So, um, you know, just to quote one, um, a recent McKinsey study actually estimated the potential uh, business impact from, uh, of course, adopting generative AI and advanced AI tools to uh, between 400 billion and 600 billion for retail and consumer companies. Um, that, that's per year, right? Um, so this is this is significant. Now, if we think about practical applications, of course, the straightforward use cases revolve around um, sales, uh, revolve around personalized marketing campaigns, as we mentioned, uh, revolve around enhanced consumer service or, or customer service. So these are, I would say, again, like pretty straightforward uh, uh, cases, right? So you can generate content much faster than before. You can uh, come through data much faster than before. Um, you know, it just kind of simplify. I think, you know, the, the biggest opportunity really is to use these technologies to, to predict future trends, right? Uh, regardless, right? Whether it's about your supply chain or, 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 or about a new product that you're trying to, to launch. Now, when it comes to, um, um, I think areas that, that most of the times are a little bit overlooked is, is really, um, like product design or research or R&D, right? So these are, let's say, you know, departments that typically have less direct access to, to, to the end consumer of, of the program they're trying to, to build and, and serve. So I think these are areas which, uh, would greatly benefit from now having access to, to tools like that, right? It speeds up tremendously the, the new product development process. Uh, and we've seen this firsthand with some of our clients. Um, and again, it's really about, you know, if you think about what, what the future holds, is, is really not anymore about system of record or system of intelligence. It goes to system of intent. So it's now, you know, you can actually allow your employees and, and your colleagues to basically describe what is your business goal? What is it that you're trying to achieve? And then have an autonomous agent actually help you create all the different steps uh, in split seconds, right, that you need to go through or questions that you need to answer to achieve your business goal. And I think this is a First of all, uh, tremendously exciting, um, but in the end, it's it's completely changing the way um, that you, uh, again, as, as a professional, as an executive, you're making decisions, but also the speed at which you can make these decisions right now. Yes, certainly more than a buzzword. I agree. They are here to stay. But one key concern for businesses is the return on advertising spend or investment. How do you quantify the impact of these AI-powered consumer insights on a company's, say, marketing success? Are there any specific metrics or success stories that spring to mind? Absolutely. Um, and I think this is, you know, it's always been a challenge, I would say, you know, how because in the end, you're in the business of providing, you know, better data so that you can make a decision, right? Um, so how we look at it, and I think how, uh, you know, some of our clients are looking at it is like, all right, so let's look at the business process that we're trying to enhance. So, for example, if you're looking at uh, launching a new product to market, uh, depending on the size of your organization and, you know, the amount of time you're in business, you already have an average number, right? Say you are on average, let's say, able to launch a new product every six weeks or every six months, right? So you have this baseline. So now the question is, um, which parts of this process you can actually improve? So let's take research, for example. You know, in the end, if you want to, you know, bring a new product to market, you would need to do your, your market study. You would need to understand, okay, what is, again, what, what do my consumers care about the most and where is this going? So today you can actually, instead of, again, weeks and months, you can do this in a couple of minutes, you can do this in a couple of hours, right? So this basically transla translates directly into um, overall time to market, right? So you can reduce that. Um, so by reducing that, I think, you know, if, if, if it was me, the way I would look at it is, all right, if I'm first to market, how much more market share can I gain, right? And I can measure that through sales, right? Um, and then um, the other thing, of course, is, you know, you can measure the client feedback from the new product that you've developed, right? So is, you know, what is the sentiment around this? 
uh, and of course, what is the financial performance? So I think these are very concrete metrics that is that is hard to to miss. Uh, I think the challenging piece always is like how much of this would you actually attribute to a a, a consumer insights process? Because in the end, it's part of the process, not the entire process. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would say that they're very it's it's a very straightforward way of how you would again how we would look at the process to say well today using you know let's say five tools or one tool or a new thing in my process new step. How much better am I from, let's say, last quarter, last year? And what recommendations would you make to someone starting or looking to build a more intelligent, data-informed marketing strategy? Let's say if they're at day zero or day one on this journey. I would say that day zero um, is probably uh, the most advantageous position that you can be right now. Uh, because if you think about it, uh, this would allow you to actually leapfrog all of your uh, competitors who invested uh, probably tens of millions of dollars in, in, in different systems. And, you know, you have a completely different problem, right? You need to make it work first. You're probably in the middle. Um, you already uh, spend a lot of, of, of budget and time, you know, educating your, your teams rolling out systems. So I think day zero today, it's probably the best thing that you could do because again, you can just go to the latest technology and implement it. And to give you an example, because we we're asking earlier around concrete success stories, uh, we're working with one of the largest consumer health companies in, in the world, and especially in the area of new product development, we help them actually save six months of time um, in terms of you know bringing their product to market, right? So it's, again, it's very, very concrete um, because in the consumer healthcare space, you know that uh, you know this time to market is, is one of the most important KPIs, right? Now, um, you know, going back to what day zero means today, there, um, I would say the, the advancements of tech allow you to basically have the plug and play systems, um, right away. What does it mean to you? It means that sure, you, you invest, uh, in, in a new tool. You still need to enable your clients or, or your, um, you know, colleagues on how to use it, but you don't need to have like super complex integrations anymore. So these, you know, long, uh, I would say software projects are kind of a thing of the past right now. So this is again, going back to this is speed. And I think in today's day and age, Speed really is the biggest competitive advantage or one of the biggest competitive uh, advantages that you could have uh, as a business. I think those are great words of advice to leave us with. So thank you, Miro, for joining us today. And thank you at home for watching. Don't forget to visit uh, www.consumergoods.com, rasnews.com, and retailleader.com for more 360-degree view fireside chats. Thank you for having me, Maya.